It's hard to have perspective when the market is so boring and moving sideways, but there are some bright spots. And today we're going to take a look at where we've been to potentially see where we're going. But first, let's take a look at this atomic wallet update. Now, yesterday we did a quick video and we talked about the atomic wallet and the hack that is going on. It's a very, it's a very strange case right now. And it seems like not every atomic wallet has been hacked or has lost their funds. It's just specific wallets and not everybody uh, has had their funds drained completely. So uh, there is that positivity on that, but um, there are some issues going on. And first of all, uh, Atomic Crypto Wallets, uh, their Twitter account said yesterday, we received reports of wallets being compromised, blah, 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 whatever. And you would think that there'd be like updates throughout the day, but no, uh, they just did an update this morning. So 24 hours later, they said update. The investigation is still ongoing in a joint effort with the leading security companies. Team is working on possible attack vectors. So we know right now that there may be some issues with this update that they did, but it's not solely just on the updates. There's something else going on. Support team is collecting victim addresses, reaching out to major exchanges and blockchain analytic companies to trace and block the stolen funds, additional instructions uh, to anyone impacted. Only contact via supported Tom quality. Oh, please be aware of fake accounts. So if you notice that if you're on Twitter, you're going to see a bunch of fake accounts going, contact me because we can help you. Now just give me your private keys and we'll make this right. So stupid, but that's what's going on. And then on top of that, <clears throat> we know it's not just a small issue of just a glitch on the app. Uh, Zach XBT is saying that he is actually collecting, it's now over 200 different people that have contacted him and, gave him, and given them uh, the actual hash or the actual wallet or the actual uh, uh, Ethereum address where these transactions are occurring. And it's not just 2.8 million. Uh, as, it's, as it's moving forward, it looks like it's over 40, $42 million that has been lost. So again, it's not just a little, small little glitch. And then, but there's something else going on, which is quite strange. This is from Secret Asian Man. He says, I, cause he said, hey, everything just reappeared. And I, I said, so funds are just magically reappearing. He goes, yeah, a friend of mine had similar problems with his assets on Atomic disappearing. Customer service helped him sort it. But to me, that's unacceptable. Nobody should have a, a stroke because Atomic's wallet doesn't work right. Blah, blah, blah. So apparently there's something going on with the app for this update, but there also are people losing funds. And I'll just remind people that I don't care what's going on with Atomic wallet. If it's me, I'd move it off. It's better to be safe than sorry. And uh, somebody wrote me and said, hey, Rob, I just want to say you warned me about Celsius. I moved most of my crypto out of Celsius to Voyager just in the nick of time. <laughs> then you warned me about Voyager. So I moved most of that to the Atomic wallet. Got your warning last night about Atomic. My largest holding HP didn't make it, but I'm moving everything what's left to my ledger. Thanks for all the warnings. Nearly escaping a return. I thought holding was safe to, was supposed to be boring, and it's not. So that is what's going on in that little piece. But let's move forward and talk about some positivity. So I wanted just to take a look at where we, where we are in, our, in, in this cycle and potentially where we're going. Now, obviously, uh, when we take a look at the four-year cycles, I talk about this all the time. And not to say that this will hold up perfectly. Who knows? All models are wrong and some are useful, right? But we can see that it seems to go in four-year cycles. There's a halving, all-time high, a dip, and a reset. Then we'll have a halving, all-time high, a dip, and a reset. This happened in 2016, 2017. And we just had it again. We have a halving. Then we had an all-time high in 2021. Then we had a dip and then a reset. We're going through that right now. And I think we're going to go through it again. I know for a fact, 100%, that we will go through a Bitcoin halving. I don't care what happens in the world. That's baked in the cake Every four years it happens somewhere on April or May of 2024, that's gonna happen. The real question is, will we see an all time high? And what I wanna do is just to see like where we're at in the cycle, because to me in the cycle itself, we're in the reset year. We're two years after the all time high. The last reset year was 2019 because 2017 was the all time high. Essentially, that's where we're at in 2023. So I wanna take a look at June, between June 2nd and June 4th, 2019, and where we're at right now. And what I wanna do is just compare 
because back then I, I did a, a couple of videos about exit strategies. This was my old exit strategy. There is actually a link in the description and it looks like this, all crypto exits old. You can find this chart, these graphs and what I did and what I screwed up and what I actually got right. And I'm just gonna take a look at six cryptos or digital assets. Ethereum, Chainlink, Bitcoin, EOS, Cardano, and Theta. That was what the original thesis was. Now, as time moved on, I bought a lot more different cryptos, but for this one, I just wanna show you what that would look like. So here's what we have. What the heck is that? Ah, there we go. So Bitcoin right now is around 27,000 on June 2nd. I put this together a couple of days ago. <laughs> and if we can see, let me move this out of the way. So on June 2nd, 2019, we were at 8,679. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be awesome if we were at 8,600? Let me tell you, when I was investing, when I was dollar cost having, but I still do, $8,600, you were kind of scared to do it because we had, we had topped out at 20,000. So we were down more than 50%. And actually we went even further in 2020 for the pandemic, we had around $5,000. But on June 2nd, Bitcoin was 8,600. Ethereum was 268, Chainlink was less than a dollar, Theta was 14 cents, EOS for some ungodful reason was $7.60 and Cardano was nine cents. It's pretty good. <clears throat> but if we jump forward, to June 2nd, which was two days ago. I think we're, we're way ahead of the curve. Bitcoin's 27,000. That's, you can see right here the, uh, the column, that's about a 3.1X from where we are in the cycle. Again, assuming the cycles hold up. Ethereum was 268, now it's 1888. That's a 7X from where it is. Chainlink is now 638, roughly. Theta is 83 cents. EOS is the only loser. Sorry, EOS. Sorry, Beardy. At 90 cents and Cardano is actually at 37. So you can just see that as we get a little more, a little more risky, things start to go up, except for Ethereum. I find that quite interesting, actually, now that I look at it. Ethereum is 7x up over what it was before. So then the question then becomes, okay, so that's where we're at right now. How does that look for an all-time high and the gains from there? Remember in 2019, 8,600, the all-time high was almost 70 grand, November something around there. Ethereum all-time high was 4,800, Chainlink was $52, Theta was $15. Imagine that, it went from 14 cents to $15. EOS, and this is all around April to November 2021, except for EOS. EOS went from 760, its all-time high was 2271, but that wasn't in 2021. That was like 2018, 2019. So it just goes to show you, which is this. The things that you invest into, they're not all gonna pan out. You're not gonna make it, it's not gonna be, you're gonna be bad a thousand, especially in investing. So I hope you understand that. There's gonna be some losses. You're gonna go through these hard times. And it's not like you're gonna shoot for the moon and always hit the stars every single time. You're gonna screw up. Things are gonna work out right but it's okay. It's the resiliency that really makes the investor whole, I think. So now let's take a look. So from the 2019 to all time highs. So again, on this date, on June 2nd, 2019, it was $8,600. All time I was saying, that's an 8X roughly. Yeah, that's about an 8X. And then Ethereum at 268 to 4,800, that's an 18X. Again, as we go down that list to see which ones we're investing into, the lower down in market cap, the riskier it becomes, but there are some payoffs. Chainlink, the all-time high was $52, 52 bucks. That's a 54X from where it was at 96 cents. Theta was the big winner. Theta was the big winner. Theta was my big winner. And I was investing all this time back then. 14 cents to $15. That's 112X. EO 760. 
that was my big loser, honestly, because uh, in 2021, it was not $22. That's just its all-time high. Actually, in 2021, I want to say it was around five. It was actually, uh, it was a loser of a deal. And then Cardano, pretty big win, nine cents. All-time high was $3. That's a 34X. So again, we're just taking a look at where we are in these cycles. 86, 27, we're actually, everybody's ahead except for EOS. Sorry. So that would kind of bring me to this one here. And I don't like doing these things. But, and this is not a price prediction, so just hold on. Don't start, don't start saying, oh, what's going, it's going to this price. This is just if we went from June to the next all-time high and did an 8X. So from here, The price today is 27,000 times 8X. You're looking at a $215,000 Bitcoin in 2025. Are we gonna hit that? I'm not saying we are, I'm just saying these are the numbers that it comes up with. Ethereum, an 18X, 34,000, that seems ridiculous. Chainlink, 350, Theta, $93, I'll take it. EOS, a whopping 269, which I think is nothing for what it is. And then Cardano at $12. That's if all these numbers hold up, but we know they're not gonna hold up. I don't think that can actually happen. I, I just I just don't. I mean, well, maybe it could. But let's be reasonable because there's these things called diminishing returns. And there's a website that I steal from every day. It's from Ben's Into the Cryptoverse. And this is where I get all my data when I really just want to just sit back and, and, and think about where things are going. And especially not just the crypto, but with, with the macro parts and I get to see not just unemployment rates, but I can see a lot of different things on, on real estate, both retail and commercial, some different M2 money supplies, M3 money supplies, everything that I really wanna do and then compare that to crypto, it's all right here. And this is where, and Ben, ben took a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of pain for his extended cycle theory, but it doesn't make sense. It made a hell of a lot of sense actually. This right here in blue, let me see if I can blow this up. So this is cycle one. This is from the bottom, which was 2010, to the top of cycle one, 2011, which is kind of a weird cycle, but whatever. It took 245 days. This is what we're most, most akin to, market cycle two, three, and four. So two is in red. So this started in 2011, and then it hit its all-time high in Let's start with three. In 2013, ba, 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 it took 744 days. So from this cycle one to this cycle two, it took a heck of a lot more days. And then cycle market cycle three, which is in orange, because we didn't have this green one yet. So just hold on. That wasn't even around. It took 1,000 days. So you went from 233 days to 740 days to a thousand days, you can kind of see where Ben got the extended cycle theory, but it didn't. Something happened right here, which invalidated it. And Ben will even admit, he's admitted it many times. This, this isn't, it's not an extended cycle theory, but there is one thing that is true. And that is that there are diminishing returns. And you can just see right here in this first cycle, pop, 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 pop. Market cycle one ROI, 583X. That's pretty good. Market cycle two, 502X. Market cycle three is around 100X. 100X. And then market cycle four, the one we just got out in 2021, was roughly only a 20X. So you went from 500 to 100 to 20. That's roughly a fifth of what it is. But there, there are some things that just didn't add up during that last one. One of those was with FTX and Three Arrows Capital playing three card Shuffle Monty and saying that they bought up Bitcoin when they didn't buy any Bitcoin whatsoever. They just took people's funds and essentially was a Ponzi scheme. There's that. There was 
a lot of things that were going on at Three Hours Capital and all the different platforms out there that were just greedy bastards all over the place and just kind of screwed everything up. I'm not saying that's what happened, but it just, something was very fishy with the last cycle. It just, that's, that's how I see it. However, when we take a look at this, coming back here, So let's just take a, let's just say this. Let's just cut it by fourth, by a fourth. Instead of saying it's going to be an 8x, let's just say that maybe it won't be 250,000. Maybe it'll be a fourth of that. So maybe the next all-time high for Bitcoin won't even hit the 69,000 mark. I'm just playing devil's advocate here because every other place will only show you that this is going to go to the moon. This is going to be awesome. And we're going to hit everything. And trust me, bro, which is stupid. You have to kind of think of and look at this and go, maybe this doesn't really pan out. You mean you're an investor. This is exactly how it is. You have to take a look at it and say, maybe things aren't going to work out too great. So let's just say, for example, the returns in 2025 are a fourth of what we think it could be. So that would be only 53,000 which wouldn't even be the all-time high in 2021. But here's the thing. We are at roughly 27,000, roughly. That's double what it is now. Where else can you do that? Can you do that in the S&P 500? Can you do that in NASDAQ? Can you do that on Forex trading? Well, maybe you can if you really, really gamble and uh, play hard and, and max out everything and uh, you know go long and and uh, just, just use a ton of leverage, I suppose. But maybe it happens, but you double your money. That's not a bad deal. And what if we went from 1888 for Ethereum and we cut that by a fourth? It doesn't hit 34,000. It's only 8,000. That's not too bad. What about Chainlink? And it's at $87. Today, it's at six bucks. That's not too bad. How about Theta? Theta right now is at under a dollar. And it goes to 23. EOS, sorry, I don't know if that will come back. Maybe EOS will flip Bitcoin. Who knows? I have no idea. Not to get Beardy's hopes up, but let's just say it doesn't do that. It's 67 cents. It's just a loser. You, you lost. And maybe Cardano hits its all-time high and goes a little bit over. That's diminishing returns by a fourth of what it is. And that could happen. Or a sixth or whatever else it is. But you're still going to be up. That's, that's the great thing. Now let's take a look at this, maybe a little more realistic. Let's take those, instead of like we, we get an 8X for Bitcoin, what if we just cut that by half? Maybe Bitcoin's 107,000. This is what I thought Bitcoin was gonna do last time and I was wrong. So who knows? But if we just take a look at diminishing returns and we X out all the, the nonsense that was going on in the, in, in the market and the Ponzi's, maybe we do it this, maybe Ethereum is 17,175. Theta of 46, EOS a dollar, and Cardano six bucks. I'll take that. So when I take a look at these things, I think it could happen. However, a lot of people will, will quote this. Rob, you don't understand. In 2021, it was a different time. 2025 is not going to do it. And one of the, the things that we, we take a look at, they, and they say this, we've never been through a war. We've never been through a recession. And this was... 2020. We've never been through a global pandemic. We've never gone through a regulation crackdown, and we've only gone through quantitative tightening, or excuse me, quantitative easing. And we've never gone through quantitative tightening, and Bitcoin's never gone up. Well, first of all, let's be honest about the wars. And I've talked about this many times. Yes, there's a, a massive war raging in Ukraine. Maybe we're on the precipice of a war with China. Who knows? But we've been warring with Afghanistan and Iraq, America has. And there's been wars raging all across the globe. This is nothing new. Recession, well, we went through a recession. It was a very short, short one with the pandemic. When COVID hit 2020, we bounced right out of it, but we still went through it. Global pandemic, obviously we've gone through one. Regulation crackdown, we're going through that right now. How many different different documents and choke point 2.0 and, and Biden administration reports come out that are really cracking down. We're going through that right now. And then as far as like quantitative 
we've only gone to quantitative easing and not quite, that's not true. Here's the M2 money supply. Let me reset this zoom. And we can see that, yeah, from, okay, you got me on the 1960s all the way through. We've done nothing but print money, right? But then we hit this top right around the money supply was 21.69 trillion in March of 2022. Then 121.678, it doesn't matter, just go to this one. On July 2022, the M2 money supply was 21.704, then 21.66, then it was 21.4. You see where I'm going? We're, we're tightening, we're not printing money. Now we're down to 20.67 trillion. So the whole argument that We've only gone through quantitative easing. It's totally untrue. And then let me go here. So that was in July 2022, right? So June, July. We were at 20,000 for Bitcoin. And even though we were tightening, and it was pretty bad, I mean, we hit 15,000, but didn't we go right back up to 30,000? as soon as, as we were quantitative tightening, and now we're down to 27. So I know I, we hear these things, you know, this will never happen, this will never happen, but I think we've already gone through it, and I think we're actually in a good place to be. So that's my little spiel. Let me know where I am wrong in my theories here. And not to say that, let me make this 100% crystal clear. Those price predictions, uh, there's, they're, they're nowhere close. It's just, that is essentially me using some numbers for a crystal ball, and I don't think that's actually gonna, gonna make it. Uh, I can't say what it's gonna be, but I can say if we take a look at where we are at in the cycles, and so far those four-year cycles have, have lived up. We may extend a little bit, we may not, but if we take a look at where we were at four years ago to where we're at today, we are far ahead, and that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Uh, that stuff with Atomic Wallet and everything else that's going on, you should subscribe to somebody. Again, I don't, give, I don't care if it's me or somebody else. Just get your news from somebody and try to keep abreast of the situation. This is not a set it and forget it place. Just trying to protect you. And that's it.